plus cancel my subscription with bicycle, is why would I want to think it's going to be different for me? Yeah, I'm listening to these people. They've done for me what I didn't do for myself yet. Might as well listen because if it's a, if you arrive at nothing really ever happened, why not just start there? You know, I don't want to have to go through 26 years of hoping to get something if I could start at that premise. Yeah, it just makes sense. I don't know. I don't see. So, uh, yeah. And then I went to satsangs, then I listened to people, but most of the people I heard, um, unless I was missing it or not, were emphasizing what we are, you know, consciousness, all this, all that. And um, something was off there to me, because something that I'm not was hearing about what I am. That's how I saw it, yeah? And I figured, you know, why, if it is true, it's indescribable, why, why waste time trying to describe what's indescribable when you can describe what's describable? You can see the activities uh, that comprise what you're not, really. So by seeing what you're not, you'll find out what you are. Because I really believe, in, my, in this case, I was trying to found, find out what I am from what I'm not, yeah? And I, didn't, I saw that was one of the larger parts of obscuring it from me, was looking for it, yeah? It just, because obvious, if you are what you're looking for, and that's busily looking for it, that would be a certain blindness to it, yeah? So, yeah, I just don't, it just doesn't, equate that if I am what I'm looking for and there's looking happening right now and I'm looking for that which I am it would seem to me that the looking for that which I am if I am that is the obscuring point. Yeah. So my own looking is obscuring the seeing. Yeah? And so where am I going to go? And this, this is like non-duality. It isn't like, you know, what's new in non-duality 2019. Nothing. It's just, it's just a fact. If it, if it, res, if it re registers in you, it sort of becomes, it, it negates that which you're taking to be personal futility. It's just, it's just telling an obvious fact. What, what you're not cannot arrive at what you are because it's already arrived there. It has never left, yeah? So the whole point is maybe ditch the wanting to arrive and get rested in on having never left. And maybe that which you've been looking for will become obvious as you, yeah? Maybe you will, by seeing what you're not, you'll sense what you are. Instead of trying to see what you are from what you're not, just let it see it, you know, from what you are. That's all. Just like the message of uh, Ho Wang Po. Here we are, you know, a mass amount of people here tonight. And so we're, so Ho Wang Po would look at everyone and go, hey, Jim, Mary, Bill, Steve. And, uh, but he didn't see Jim, Mary, Bill, Steve. You know, I, uh, I hazard a guess. Because he was, and yet he would say a statement, and he'd hope to get the statement through Jim, Billy, Mary, and Steve, not to but through it to the Buddha. So he would say, you can't use the Buddha to seek the Buddha. Why would he say that unless that was what was happening, really? I mean, why would you warn, get out of the house, there is no fire? I mean, it would be stupid, yes? Why, well, just warning for warning state? Yeah. So you can't use the Buddha to seek the Buddha. Obviously, he was directing that at the Buddha. He wouldn't be directing it at Steve, Mary, Jim, or Sue. Yeah? But see, the Buddha, a.k.a. Jim, Mary, Sue. Yeah? So I've seen enough of these talks that it's a waste of time talking to you about the Buddha. It, but it works if you talk to the Buddha about you, basically. Yeah? Because that Buddha, if it is sort of like the Christian thing, it's omnipotent, omnipresent, meaning it's everywhere. Well, it's here, yeah? And if you throw this message over our heads, maybe that's what will catch it. You have a raw mind, R-A-W, mind. There is another mail slot. It all doesn't go all through the fucking mental front door. It doesn't. A lot of information can get through this little horizontal download, yeah? 
and then get sucked up, you know, those tubes, sucked up and get some vertical messages. It can, it's easy, yeah? So all it is is that which thinks it's here, hearing this message, is not you. That's it, simple as that. But you don't say it's not you, you just entertain that idea, and then it gets revealed to be not you, yeah? You don't want not you saying it's not you. Yes? So that which isn't you, hears the message it isn't you, and then it tries not to be you. Yeah? That doesn't work. You're trying to get it to another aspect so that you'll see that which wants to deny what it isn't, which is more of itself. Yeah? So if there's a lot of smoke getting blown, and, not, and there's no live fires anywhere except you. You're the obscuring activity. Yeah? What else is? How could false evidence appear real? You know, this acronym of fear we use in recovery. How could false evidence appear real unless it appeared real to what's real? It wouldn't be able to... It wouldn't be able, able to appear real, it has to appear real to something. And it appears real to what's real. Yeah? So the false evidence of us as a long-lasting, independent, separate entity is appearing real to what we are. Yeah? It's not real as that, it appears real. Yeah? And it can only appear real for a certain length of time. It can't even hold this, it's like holding a breath, it can't even hold it that long. It's like 70, 80, 90 years, and basically there's going to be an ex exhale, and you'll see that nothing ever freaking happened to change anything. And if somebody or someone says they've had a big awakening, hmm, they're going to have to admit sooner or later that when that awakening dawned on them, it, it revealed to them nothing, it's always been this way. So basically, did they have an awakening? As Ramana Maharshi says, it's always realized. Always realized. Yeah. Always realized. So how can there be an happening of that which has always happened? If you would lose interest in it, it would be more obvious to you. Really. And it's difficult to lose interest in it as what you're not. So you lose interest in what you're not. And that's how you lose interest in it, yeah? Completely lose interest in the need to be liberated because what needs to be liberated isn't you, really. Yeah? And you're, that interest, you don't lose it. It just goes, it just... It gets relieved of that fucking preoccupation. And then it disperses. And then it's available. And to me, presence is just undirected interest and attention. Yeah, it's just free from this freaking constantly looking for something. And now it's just resting. That's the sense of presence. Yeah. And now it will enrich your day. Instead of enslave it to yesterday and tomorrow, it will enrich the day. Yeah. That which is the basis of irritable restlessness, dis and content, if resting somewhere else would be an ease and comfort. It's the same energy, it's just where it's laying or where it's lying. Yeah, so, uh, so that's how it was revealed to me, and I'm sticking to it, basically. I think we're wasting a lot of time without, if you don't see the shadow, you'll be taking yourself to be the shadow. And like Ramana said so clearly, in so many ways, there is a presupposing of something a non-existent thing being what existing, yeah? A presupposing of a non-existent thing that wants to get salvation for the non-existent thing. Yeah, who doesn't want to get salvation? Yeah? But and if this is the case, your spiritual practices themselves are reinforcing the non-existent thing, how can they destroy it? So you're in a little bit of a conundrum, yeah? So your, your idea of arriving somewhere is really the imaginary departing from somewhere you could never leave from, yeah? So first there has to be a belief that you departed to get really, really, you know, jacked up about arriving. Yes, obviously. This is a dualistic expression. 
Yeah? So first, you think you're moving towards things, but it's always a moving away, and then a moving towards. Yeah? So here's the belief that you've departed, and now you want to arrive. And yet the arrival keeps going on and on and on and on, because you never departed. Yeah? Like that yogic mantra we shared last night. It's not ours. It's, you know, it was on a yoga studio wall. Gone, gone, gone to the other shore. The other shore in Buddhism is like whatever, awakening, whatever. Yeah? Gone, gone, gone to the other shore. Arriving at the other shore. Uh, wait, was it? Yeah, gone, gone, gone to the other shore. Arriving at the, uh, the, the other shore on having never left. Why does, he, why does that freaking mean? Gone, gone, gone to the other shore, on arriving, yes, on arriving at the other shore, on having never left. So what happens, what gets dispelled when you arrive is there was any arriving. You never arrive at the other shore, you never left the other shore. So the arriving to the other shore, when it occurs, it reveals you never left the other shore. So it wasn't an arrival, it was a negation of a departure. It was basically saying, you never went anywhere. That's the only reason why you can't have the joy of arriving unless you make it up because you never departed. It's like the old story Ramana said about the lady with the beautiful necklace, and then uh, I'm, I'm going to wreck it, but I'm paraphrasing it. I don't have any of these memorized. <laughs> it's just something that triggered something in me, so I, I vaguely anchored it, yeah? So here it goes. It says, uh, this lady has a beautiful necklace, and then she loses the necklace. And then, so she's really bummed out, and she's talking to all her friends about it, and a lot of them have lost necklaces, and they sort of commiserate. And then, uh, um, she asked them to help them find the necklace. So they start searching for the necklace and they heard about a guy or a woman somewhere farther away that, puts, that says they found their necklace. So they go, let's go and see what he has to say. So they go to the meeting and the meeting, the, the guy professes up to finding the necklace and he believes he can show you how to do it. You have to put a, like, you know, a donation first and then come back and we'll get to the process of how to find the necklace that you've lost. And because you believe hey, he's found it, you're like, okay, sign me up, you know? And so there you go. And then, but see, now she's really getting bummed out because she can't seem to find the necklace that she lost. And nor can the other people. And she's starting to doubt this person that said they found the necklace, yeah? So suddenly she's just I'm really bummed out and someone comes over and says, hey, she says, I can't, I've lost this necklace. I'm so bummed out. She says, why not it's, just feel your neck? So she feels her neck and there's the necklace. So now she gets this giant rush of joy. She found the necklace, but did she find the necklace? Though she had joy based on finding the necklace and her being bummed out was based on losing the necklace. But when she found the necklace, quote unquote, it had, but it wasn't based on ever being lost. She just wasn't aware of the necklace, yes? Didn't mean the necklace was lost, just like a lot of times I lose my keys but I find them very quickly thereafter because they were just misplaced, yeah? So in this case, but this is the incredible thing is she felt great depression when she thought she lost it. The depression wasn't based on losing it. It was based on her thinking she lost it. Just like I see people, they come to our meeting and then uh, we go to a coffee place afterwards. And we did this one day and we had a perfect illustration of it. And so, then the people leave the church park, they like, go to this coffee place. And so we went to the coffee place, and then uh, my friend got driven back to the, to, to the place to get his car, truck, and it was gone. So immediately, and there's a beater, you know, he thinks someone stole it. The other people with him say, who the hell would you can steal that truck? But he's like, he's looking around, he calls the police, he's like ready to go, you know, into people's garages, who stole my truck? Yeah. And then he calls us when we're having a coffee and he wants to ask his best friend. And his best friend says, oh no, you drove towards the coffee thing. You saw me, you parked, and I took you here. So now he has the great joy. Oh, I found the car, the truck. But he didn't find the truck. It hadn't been anywhere. It was exactly where he parked it. This is exactly what it's like. 
Yet, because there's dreaming going on, you're dreaming that you've lost something you can never lose, and that's the driving fire to look for. It. And then when you find it, it tells you it was never lost. And yet, you hold on to the freaking story. That's dreaming, pure and simple dreaming. You're being bummed out based on losing something that was never lost, and you're a great elevation and joy based on something of finding something that never, never lost. So what's going on here is dreaming. We're dreaming we've lost something that we've never lost, and we're hoping we'll find it so we can have the great joy of return. But in fact, when you arrive at the other shore, it tells you you've never left the other shore. So did you actually wake up when you've always been awake? No, it's a freaking story here in time, yes? But in fact, when you arrive, that goal of the arrival negates the whole story of getting there. So gone, gone, gone to the other shore, arriving at the other shore on having never left. Why not we just cut out the first few sentences, gone, gone, at least take one or two gones out. You know, maybe gone is all right, not gone, gone, gone. It's a lot of time and fucking spiritual budgeting and everything. So gone, let's say, to the other shore. All right? And then the realization on having never left. There you go. Or just have on having never left. Can you imagine if you ever read a fairy tale? It always starts with once upon a time. Could you imagine if they all started on having never left? Fucking, there you would go. There'd be no stories. You'd just be fucking here. Yeah? What's, it's always like that, you see? The arrival is what the mental state loves because it loves to become something. It doesn't have real interest in being other than itself. Yeah? It wants to become, and to become what it is is, a lot, is more than a lifetime journey. It can be lifetimes. So it's very comfortable in this position where what it's not is being spotlighted, searching for what it is. Because what, it not, what it's not knows it's never going to find what it is. Yeah? Because it already is what it is. Yeah? So to me, Ramana and these people are trying to make a very important point that you have to see this development of that what you're not. Yeah? Yes? To see that and then find out what you are instead of trying to search for what you are because it will be reinforcing what you're not. It's just that simple. It's a warning, just like all, to me, high-level shit is warnings, really. They're trying to warning, they're trying to talk to the Buddha and get through this whole obscuring activity to try to get to the Buddha, just to say to the Buddha, hey, Buddha, you can't use yourself to find yourself. Yeah? It's a great fucking, it's better than 50 Thai massages, yeah? It just, there's a dropping. You cannot believe how much coiled time is in this pursuit. It's a lot, a lot of juice like this. It's coiled, and it's just sprung over time, on and on and on and on. It can, that, that coiledness could fuel a seeking for many fucking years, yeah? On and on and on and on. What happens if you see the futility of it? that you're never going to arrive at way, where you already are. That futility of it would be an incredible distribution of interest and attention. It would leave the preoccupation, preoccupation of all this, and it would enrich your freaking day, and others. Yeah? Because now you'd be available, not because of any Herculean task of arriving in her availability, it's just obvious you cannot be out of any moment. So you're going to be available, and you're going to be present, and to me, that's service, just as simple as that, yeah? So you'll be put to use here. It doesn't even matter if you're agreeing with it or not. You're going to be put to use here, and you're never going to get chipped. You're never going to think, oh, I, I'm out of it. You're never out of it. You can never get out of everywhere. It's impossible, yeah? So to me, it's a seeing what you're not. So. You can study what you're not. You can study what you're not. You can understand what you're not. You can describe what you're not. Yeah? You're experiencing what you're not most of the time. But you can't apply that to what you are. You cannot study what you are because you are it. 
You cannot understand what you are because you are. But you can apply that, that format to everything that's other than you, but you cannot apply it, especially as what you're not, to that which you are. It's just, I don't believe it works, to tell you the truth. How could it? How could you be something else and know and have us have an understanding of what you are when you're actually being it? Yeah? So, yeah, that's it, really. And then you, all the other stuff for me is just warnings. You're trying to warn people of the common holes that we fall into because here, what's hearing the message is what we're not. It takes maybe less than two seconds, some research says, for the brain to develop that sense of self. And the movement of selfing is to claim what's happening. That's what it does, yeah? So there's seeing, on, the, on our baseline, the seeing, hearing, feeling, tasting, touching is the basis of all this event. The mental states arise after it, and there's a part of there, there's an intent there that claims the seeing, hearing, feeling, tasting, touching to imply that there's a seer, a hearer, a feeler, a taster, and a toucher. And then it gets dualistically presented. There's a seer and seen, a hearer and heard, a feeler and felt. And then you lose the sense of the living, the being of it all, and now you have an interpretation of it. Yeah. And the stubbornness of the identification as what you're not will come to 800 meetings. And it will still be hoping and waiting to get it. It will. It's super pissed, but it's also civilized. So it's not going to flip out, but it would probably be better if it fucking did, really. Yeah? Because it's just sitting there thinking it's got to happen, you know? No. And then getting really pissed at people who seem to be awake and they've gone to less meetings than they have. And then it's really. And then your words awakening enlightenment, which in a way, enlightenment, one of the definitions means cessation of all suffering, is used to cause suffering mind-boggling. You're going to meetings and it would have been better if we never heard the word awakening. We really would have been better off. We just have another fucking thing to judge ourselves by. Yeah, and then enlightenment's the kicker, you know. Yeah, so you have to see what's going on here. There's something that's inferring it's you that's trying to claim this message and it's going to neuter the message. It's going to be that thing with the sheep and the lion. And I swear, the lion, you know, it's such a simple thing. If I'm a lion and you're a lion, how many, do you have to have a retreat to tell a lion it's a lion? No. It's a fucking, it's like you could do it walking down an aisle at the supermarket. Hey, you're a lion. And because the lion is this obvious, oh yeah, thank you. Wouldn't it be like, fucking, let's go over this for three weeks. You're a lion. There must be something that obscuring the message from getting from the lion to the other lion. What is that? I don't care about the lion. I care about the programming of the sheep. That's what I care about. Because then the sheep claims to hear the message and turns it into, I can become like a lion, which is not the message. The message is, you're a lion. Everyone goes, oh, yeah, 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 here it goes, you're a lion, you're a lion. Maybe I thought I would just shorten the range, like sit right next to the person. So there isn't, how much can happen in four feet? A lot. So you're a lion, you're a lion, you're a lion, and then it hits the ear, and suddenly it's translated into I become like a lion, because what claimed to be the hero of the message is the sheep. And a lot of us don't see it. We don't. We are not seeing it. So we're hearing the message, I'm a lion, and going like this. Yeah, I'm a lion, I'm a lion. Let's go chant, I'm a lion for three fucking days. What does that reinforce? The sheep identity. A lion's not going to chant, it's a lion for three days. It's a lion, yeah? The only thing that wants to get out of a body is a body. So let's get clear, you're not a sheep. And let's describe what it looks like how does a lion take itself to be a sheep? Very easy. This, you can see the diagnosis in your own day. The thought system, the thoughts, the feelings, the actions are all being claimed to imply the actor, the thinker, and the feeler, and it's pictured as a sheep. So all the reinforcing, the thing gets hit, and then the picture, ooh, sheep. Lion gets hit, sheep. 
thousands of hits, she, and then suddenly it doesn't, it doesn't even, it's habitual, I'm a she. Yeah. So then it's, maybe it's not working well for it. Yeah. So then it goes to a meeting, and here's like there's an underground group. Yeah. And there's going to be a real heroic sheep talking about being, you know, how to be a lion. So you go to the meeting, you know, there's other sheep like you, and some guys talk, and they have pictures of lions, and there's little candles, and uh, yes, and they're, all right, we're having, you know, roaring lessons on Saturday, 10 to 11, sign up, you know, get your hair straightened out. We're going to straighten the hair out, create some manes, and we're going to become a lion as a sheep. Really. We're going to try, blah, blah, you know, sharpen your hoofs. So it's got such an absurd length, yeah? But all the while, all that is necessary is to get the message through to the lion, not to the sheep, by telling the lion at a meeting when it's seemingly in sheep's clothing, this is what's going on. There is an activity that's happening that is claiming a one before the one. And so when the message of the one is shared to a one, the a one claims it and neuters it, and now becomes, all right, I am going to become a non-self as a self. Non-duality isn't meant to fucking go on for 50 years. It's an invitation, it's a fact, yeah? And then you go on with living. You see, the duality is going to keep occurring. The programming of this, don't waste any time trying to convince this it has no free will. It's programmed to, have, to think it has free will. Just so you're not that which has free will. That's all. And you're not that that thinks it doesn't have free will. You're neither of those little you know, things that arise. You are the seeing of it all. The seeing of it all that was never found and never lost has never, there's never a blemish on it. And no thing could obscure it from itself unless it's in cahoots with it. So it gets tired of this little dreaming of being Paul and it loses interest in it. And then it gains interest in what? You'll find out. It's, you're not going to get a rote answer. You'll find out. Just entertain these ideas. These ideas take hold. They gain traction. And then you really, really get the sense you actually are what you've been looking for. But not as what's looking. Yeah? But as what's seen. You get it. And then these cryptic statements make freaking sense finally. St. Francis, what's looking is what you're looking for. I mean, how more direct do you want it? He doesn't say what's looking will be what you're looking for if you go through 50 pages of requirements. No. It says what's looking is what you're looking for. What, what, what? Yeah, you can't see the what's looking because you are the freaking what's looking. <laughs> how could you use the seeing to look for itself? It's insane. It's the form. It's the biggest form of blindness. When don't you? You gotta have heard it at these at satsangs. They're basically saying, I hope. I don't know. I haven't been to one since two thousand. But when I did go, they were saying, all you are is consciousness. Well, they, whatever. Maybe they've developed more. But they were all you are is consciousness. But they don't, they're not emphasizing what's hearing that they're all there are as consciousness is not consciousness. It's a mental fucking idea. The mental idea now claims it's conscious. And then what happens? Then you feel less conscious than ever. And then you're driven to seek to become more conscious when all there is is consciousness. It's a robbery over and over and over again. And you know what? The heist is all about arriving or that somehow you departed, so you're really guilty of where you never left from. Yeah. yeah. So seeing what we're not, you cannot, I swear, I can break it down. I can tell you the mental state arises after conscious contact and claims to be the one who's conscious. It doesn't. It's simple as this, that which comes after, which is the idea of you, is implied to be before. Now it's you that has ideas. That's what it is. An activity produces the sense of being a someone. The someone is presupposed and now thinks it's doing all the activities. It's incredible. 
It's like the Zorro world. You think everyone's moving ahead, they're actually walking backwards in a weird way. That which comes after, so there's verbing, that's all that's happening here. Seeing, hearing, feeling, tasting, doing, all of that, yeah? It's all verbing, yes? The mental state uses the verbing to imply a noun. Just that simple. The noun is implied after the verbing and then presupposed before the verbing, and now the noun thinks it's doing the verbing. That's, the, that's it right there. You don't need to see it 800,000 times. If you see it a few times, it will expand to like the 100, mon 100 monkey phenomenon. You'll fucking get it. You'll see you, you, are, you are and can only be verbing here. There's no noun to be found. And the verbing is what's happening. The story of the noun having everything happening to it is a fucking interpretation, a mental one. You don't even have it when you're a baby. You grow into it. So what happens if you see it? It change, it'll change. How can it not? If you are before any everything and you have a skewered look and, that's, and then that gives all the meaning to everything that follows you, if that skewered look changes, everything will seem to change. Yeah? Because you're the dreaming of it all. You're not a little speck in a dreamt. You're the dreaming. You're the, you're the manifesting of what we are here. This is what's happening. We're verbing completely. All time, no time. The mental state uses the verbing to apply a noun. All you can do, you can't take out an imaginary disease. All you can do as a doctor is to describe it. That's all. Describe it, have little skeletal things of it, see how your lips go on the doll to and then blow it up, follow and see your role in it, which is fucking everything. Yeah? And see, <laughs> here you are, trying to arrive at somewhere, but you're always putting it on plate. You're never gonna transverse this space. <laughs> you're never going to arrive. <laughs> now, if you saw this, if you saw, instead of looking from this, looking for everything, if you saw this from a raw aspect of mine, you would see I'm not that. <laughs> That's what you would see. Everything you'd learn about this would, co would co coagulate in one idea. Hey, I'm not that. Yeah? And as soon as you real, especially if the disease in a sense is identification, as soon as you're not that, you see you're not that which you were identified as, what possibly can happen? You see, you can be free from it. <laughs> and then you'll see, you've been spending all your life trying to be free as it. That's what happens. That's what happened with me. As soon as I saw this idea of Paul and all it represented, all that feeling, personalness of doing and thinking, I saw it was not, it was a foreign installment really, or like a mental parasitical movement or a pathogen or whatever. I saw it as other. The next possibility just downloaded and it was I can be free from it. And then the next, what the information that came in in a flash was it showed me since I've been now six years old, I've been trying to be free as it. I've been trying to be free as what I'm not. And the freedom is from what I'm not. And if the freedom is from what I'm not, and I'm not that, then the freedom is inherently available. If the freedom is based from that, and there is no that, yeah, then the freedom is inherently available. In other words, it, I have nothing to do with it as what I'm not. I can't make a gate, I can't take tolls, I can't say no forbidden, no entry, none of that, yeah? It's always available at all times, right where we are, with no requirement necessary, unless you've made up a lot. And then what will happen in this life? You'll lose interest in those requirements, and when you finally give yourself permission to be where you are, you realize you never freaking left. Yeah? So, It's a nice invitation.
Yeah. It can be repeated sound. a lot. Yeah. You make it sound easy. How come it's so hard? Well, it's very hard for you. Are uh, you? Yeah, definitely. Well, what really happened, this is, I'm just talk, telling you about the fallout from entertaining this. I truly lost all interest in liberation. If you took a blood test and you checked out for spirituality, it would be zero, zero, zero point zero, zero, zero. I have no fucking interest in this as a topic or anything else. I don't. No, it's way, be, way before all that. You just, you're it. You, and you're it, and there's thinking that it's not so. And most of the faith that we have seemingly is in the thoughts. We believe, as Jesus says, as you think so it is. Well, in a sense, that's the way it goes. You think of yourself as a body. Your memories picture you as a body. Yeah? Your future worries are about you as a body. So thinking that's so, remembering it that's so, Future forecasting is so, it seems to be so. It appears to be so to someone. Yeah. Doesn't mean it's so, but it seems to be. And really, the basic premise of the dreaming and you being the dreaming is everything is seemingly so. It's appearing to be true or false to you. So at one point, it's appearing to be true that you're separate, that you're something solid, different, that you're the doer of the actions, that you're the thinker of the thoughts. Yeah, there's a belief in that. There's a strong faith in that. And then if you try to leave that port to arrive at the, the, the other port of, it's got to be better if I get out of me as me, you bring the whole shit with you. Yeah, you have to see you're not that. Really. And if you see you're not that, and the only reason the interest and attention is so into it is because it's you. If it isn't you, you'll lose interest in it. Just like if you've been listening to your own head for 40 years, Religiously, if you had Stanley's little, a little snip of Stanley's little inner dialogue and saw the Stanley's, you'd be bored stiff in about a minute or two, unless you went out with a Stanley sometime in the past and you want to be right about him. But basically, if it wasn't about you, you'd freaking lose interest in it very quickly. Why does it hold out interest? Is because there's a belief it's us. So maybe don't fight that, just so you're not that that has the belief it's us. That's all. It's not about changing a fucking thing. It's about seeing who or wants who or what wants it to be changed. Yeah, just see it. Yeah. And when it's set, you know, you'll see what you're not. Yeah, you'll see it. And then you know, here it may look like this, you know? So here, you're on a consequential level. You're really not knowing what's going on. You're like, I used to call it the hallway of shit and fans, yeah? So you're running through the hallway of shit and trance, just trying to have as much fun and not hurt people, maybe do less harm. But that, you know, but there's, you know, you, you've got all these skillful means, you know, like good visors, you know, so you have 50 visors so you don't get blinded by the shit. But then after a while, hopefully the aperture opens up and you see, hey, it seems like every time I enter the hallway of shit and fans, I, the fans turn on and the shit starts aligning with the fans. Maybe I have something to do with it. Who knows? You know? It's not working blaming the whole way shit fans. Maybe I entering the shit triggers the whole fucking thing. All right, so now you're seeing a little more, which is cool. Yeah? Because there's, there's, there's a relief in you know, pulling up the camera, which you can't do, by the way. See, you're not the one that can pull the camera up and open the apertures. That's a fucking set aperture already of self. The set aperture can't open the other apertures. It says it can, but it can't, it's locked, yeah? And it doesn't matter, let's say if you had a brownie camera, there's cheap cameras uh, in America when I was growing up, they're very cheap, they had the little ones you could get a box, and they had a plastic lens, really, and you just, you know, point and hope, really, you couldn't even see out of the lens, and you get a picture, hopefully, yeah? All right, so there's the brownie camera. And then there's this incredible HD, totally 360 panoramic camera with a mobile tripod trucking around. And he looks at the brownie camera and goes, hey, I want to check this out. And so the big camera looks through the little camera. And while looking through the little camera, it's seemingly, in other words, it appears to the bigger camera, it's forgotten itself. Yeah? 
because it's remembering itself now as the brownie. Yes? So now this huge, incredible camera is seeing everything from this brownie, this plastic lens. Now that stubbornness of being the brownie is quite stubborn, so when it wants to, wants to get out of this brownie, but it says, I can't get out of it, I am the brownie, so let's make it better. So it buys like $8,000 of Nikon incredible lenses, but it, 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 it fixes it to the plastic lens, which is the first lens. It doesn't, you keep seeing nothing. It doesn't matter how polished the lens that are put on the first lens are if the first lens is not clear. Yes, don't you see it? All right, so what happens? It can bitch about it and try to get, I'm gonna try to become a Nikon, but as the brownie. Fucking, it's not gonna work. <laughs> so what's the next thing? Hey, maybe you're not the brownie. So then the mind, the, the big camera, hears this idea, hey, I may be not the brownie, and what happens? It just leans away and it doesn't go away with the brownie, yes? The brownie's there and it goes whoop. That's what this is like with the apertures in seeing this place, yeah? You move back from the brownie and the brownie doesn't go with you, yeah? So you see what you used to look from. You see it, you see the activity. And then you see, as soon as you see the activity, the brownie is, is inferred to be right there. But you see it, you say, wait, wait a minute. So now you're talking as if you're the brownie again. So you see that, aperture's open, the brownie appears again. See, blah, blah. And then you realize the brownie is going to appear wherever you are, it doesn't mean that's you, yes? So you are that which is behind the camera and nothing before the camera ever is gonna get behind you, yes? So you are seeing. You're seeing the identification as, it doesn't mean it all stops, it continues as a mechanical thing, but it's not you, yeah? It's not of you. You may seem to be in it, but you're not of it. And what happens to you as, quote unquote, a brownie camera the rest of your life, is you travel lighter through life as a brownie camera because you're not a brownie camera, yeah? You travel lighter doesn't mean everything goes great. It means whatever life has in store for the brownie camera, you'll travel lighter over. And then what, do you, what more do you want as a brownie camera? <laughs> you're, you're a brownie camera for another 20 years, maybe 30 years, maybe for me four years, who knows? Yeah, so I mean, I don't give a shit about awareness as the brownie camera. I want the values needs to be for the brownie camera, but the, it can't be as the brownie camera. Yeah, it doesn't work. So you see what you're not, and that's the biggest break you'd ever got, really. Because this has a hard time being the center of the universe. I mean, really, it's, can't, it's had millions of thoughts about it. <laughs> it's way too much, it's overloaded. That mind that's looking at it all day is just too bright of a fucking spotlight. It's just incinerating the poor fucking thing. Look at people, sit with them for five minutes. We're all fucking crazy. Someone, I, I watch people talking from a table, and from another table, and the lady looks incredible from here up, and then the bottom, she just, she's like fucking flipping out. You know what I mean? It's unbelievable. <laughs> just, we're, we're just, we're getting like, like mini electrocutions of mental anxiety mimicking fear. It's just way too much. Yeah. If you see what you're not, this will be the greatest day for this because it will be able to, see, to me, the urban renewal project will stop, really, and acceptance will come in. And I haven't had acceptance of this since my grandmother hugged me when I was five years old, really. Yeah, this thing has been, something's been on it, going over every fucking thing it was supposedly doing, what it shouldn't have done, this and that, on and on, it's brutal. So now, uh, traveling lighter. Yeah. The fact is in place. You don't need to polish it. Non-duality is true. Yeah. There is no two, there's no subject object, no dualism. There's no awareness being claimed to be an attribute of the body, there's just Dreaming, yes? That's what's going on. There's a dreaming of two, but there isn't a two, yeah? So. When you first shifted, did a lot of stuff come up? Or? 
For the body, sure, yeah. A lot of things happen because a lot of the story of you is where your interest lies. And so when your interest changes and people that you were interested in listening to, you're not anymore and stuff like that, it's disconcerting for the action figure because it wants to belong, it likes familiarity, yes, it does. It wants to know at all, of course, and it wants relevance, really. And when it's made up floor starts getting shaky, it gets a little uncomfortable. Yeah, but that's just a phase, and then you, uh, you just get with it. well, you do whatever, watch what Netflix or whatever, you know, do, it's not, you know, whatever, don't, don't become a fucking non-duality martyr, please, don't be fucking, there is no self, so, you know, fucking watch Stranger Things or something, you know, just, just take, if the interest and attention is on this way too much, you're saying you're not this doesn't work. Just do something. Yeah? Yeah, and then it passes and thing gets established. Like we say in AA, you sincerely take a position that you get established in it. In time, it can look like that. Of course, the position's never been anything other than that, but in time, as the action figure, you're, like, you're sincerely open to, hey, I know this is a dead end, nothing bad or good, I just, this is not going to be able to embrace or understand or get what it so sorely seems to need. So I have to just see that the system has failed so that other systems can kick in, basically. If I keep applying the same failed system, it's going to override the new systems that get introduced, yes? So I have to see the futility of this, I had it when I was young, you know, I had a guru when I was young, Guru Maharaji, a kid, I met him when he was like 11 years old, 12 years old. And when I got, I got run over by a car, you know, twice in one night, which is very difficult to do. Uh, and I ended up in a, in a hospital bed for quite a long time. And I went into a lot of weird states under whatever they were giving me or whatnot. And I would close my, I would see the light above the door and then I'd go off. And each time I went into wherever I went, I picked up qualities that I didn't forget. Like I knew I could fly, I could fly through people, so I'd warn them. I'd go, wait a minute, don't worry, and I'd go right through them. So what I did is, I, and I saw tons of videos that were never made of this guru. Yet I wasn't moved at all to go see him when I got out of that. But it, I saw him tons of times. Then I saw, I flew down to Miami, where he lived, one of the places, and he was having a meeting with kids with people, you know, followers with kids, because he had kids. And he was sitting on, like, on a little raised die, and of course I started a commotion because I was flying around the room, but it got, you know, it got calmed down, and I landed, and I looked at him, and like, as the authority, and I was saying, you know, what's up, basically? And he had a little smile on his face, you're too complicated to get it. And I could feel that, it was like earth bone crushing, you know, I was so deflated. And then, uh, so what happened is, they gave me money, you know. This is how I saw it. And then when I, I woke up in the hospital bed, I looked for the money, because I was going to buy a ticket. And then I had all the nurses, but there was no money on the house, in the hospital bed. So I went back to them, and they gave me a ticket. I came to in the hospital, I had the nurses looking for a the ticket. There's no ticket. I go back the third time, and then suddenly... The, their, his followers are holding me by the feet and the nurses are holding me by the elbow and it was sort of like, should I stay or should I go? And then I popped into the hospital scene and I never, that was the end of the, all those trips. Yeah, it was a trip. I don't know why I'm talking about. Oh, because I've seen, I saw the failedness of what I, this whole thing is relying on. Yeah, it's not, it's not wrong about it, it's a failed system. Yeah. The brain of this failed system interprets to the body of which it is a part. So if you're relying on the system's in, uh, interpretation and collate, collating of information, you're going to be taking yourself to be a solid, separate, long-lasting thing that can be hurt and that can lose what it has and not get what it wants and can be unloved and all these insane, crazy ideas. You will live, you will believe fervently if the basis is taken to be true. You will, yeah. All the while being exactly what you're looking for. All the while. All the while, yeah. And in a sense, there's nothing wrong with it. We're right with it because when the dreaming's over, it'll be like it never happened. 
Yeah, this never happened. This is always happening, but it never happened. There is no real thing that has happened. Yeah? There's dreamings of things being real, but there is no real thing happening. So hopefully you go through whatever you go through and the apertures open up more and more gets revealed. And then you start, you see that what you're not, wherever, see like look at people with epif- when they have epiphany, yeah? Have you ever, you know, when something, life intervenes and just interrupts your linear story and whatever. But usually they end coincided with this, I'm having an epiphany. As soon as there's the claiming of the epiphany, the epiphany's neutered. Exactly. This is what the head's doing all day. And we're usually starting after that. We don't even notice it. The, uh, an epiphany can let you see the thief come in and then claim it. Usually we're living after the heist. We don't even see what's going on. If you, I was into cocaine like heavily as an addict, but I never thought I was cocaine ever. When the drug the mental state's addicted to starts from there. It's thinking it's itself. It's thinking that the, the insane alpha obsession is what's saying it has all the other obsessions. You, you can catalog all the obsessions you think you have. You don't see the obsession of the first obsession. Yeah? We're starting. We, we're... We're trying to get over a coke addiction as coke. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Just see so you're not coke, and then you have a chance. <laughs> I'm just, these are just spiritual shoes. If it fits, wear it. I wore them and uh, it ended it. I saw, there's no way if I don't see this, I'm going to be looking from it. I don't give a shit about hearing anything about what I am or what you are ever again. Because with this in place, it doesn't go fucking anywhere. It doesn't. You will hear about the Buddha zillions of times, all the while being the Buddha. Just hear about you, really. Hear about what you are, and then see you're not. Yeah. If you're described as what you are, which is a manufactured premise by the claiming of what's happening, you will lose interest in it. You will. And, the, and that interest that you're trying to point and focus is tainted. You're thinking it's going this way. It's all reflecting you more. All you're wanting to find this, the bigger boom is you. It's like a mobile narcissus pool. You're just everywhere fucking seeing you all day, especially with God and spirituality, more so than ever. Yeah? So just, this is about seeing you're not that. That's all. And you have the quality of seeing. It's not been touched, and it's not, nothing has ever replaced it as the before. Nothing. It's impossible. Seeing, there's nothing that's seeing, seeing. There's just nothing that's seeing what's seeing now. Nothing. Yeah. You are it. You're the last depot. That's that, eh? I wish it wasn't this way. It would be so much more fun to teach, you know, and fucking have intensives and levels and shit. It's just not true to me. I don't, why, how, isn't like a night in Portland intense enough? Why would I want to fucking pay to go on an intensive? I live, go to Newark, New Jersey. Go to Hoboken, you'll be in an intensive. Incredibly intensive, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> you want to go on retreats go on a 10 day cocaine retreat you're more, more of what you're not will be revealed in that fucking retreat than all the other retreats <laughs> because they'll be ripping you a new one <laughs> you may be civilized and socialized it isn't it's ravenous it's a fucking parasite <laughs> you can't make it a service animal. <laughs> You're not going to domesticate it. 
you have to see it as other than you or you'll be feeding it all fucking day thinking it's you. Yeah. I hear it all day. I work with people, a lot of people I'm in recovery mostly. Thoughts are the vehicle. Yeah? And how the vehicle of thoughts can promote and distract and build all these things up is because you're, you hold them as yours. In one, in one way or the another, the mental state implies you're either that which is thought about or the thinker of it. Yeah? That's the bondage. The bondage is all the verbs being claimed to lock a noun into place. Yeah? So now a thought, when it's yours, can ruin your fucking day. One thought. One thought can turn a Hawaii vacation awry, really. That's how powerful the my is. Not the thought, the my. The my, yeah? So that's us as the mental activity. What we are before that mental activity is fucking unbelievable. You can see the power of the mental state. It can make shit out of nothing. Can it? It can, most people are occupied by what's not happening. And the only way what's not happening could be happening is if what's happening is entertaining you. We are what's happening. We are what's happening. We're bringing in next Wednesday in 2030 and 2001 and 1978 into this all freaking day. You feel a little weird. It says it's the beginning of a lifelong depression. If you're having a great time, it says you better get suspicious. They're gonna find out you're a fraud. You wanna live with that theme setting? Fuck. I've seen it. I've seen people call me up. They're totally fucked up today, July 12th by August 5th. August 5th is more dominant than July 12th while you're in July 12th. Blows my mind, man. The slavery is incredible. So, yeah, you don't don't worry about thoughts. Just see they're not yours, really. If you possibly can entertain that, it's the my. A feeling is a feeling, but if it's your feeling, it will allow you to remember past feelings for 40, 50 years. You'll live in a resentment that never ever happened. Yeah, so... Just get the diagnosis correctly, I hope, and then spend time learning about what you're not so that you can recognize it, really. Because if you don't recognize it, you're gonna call it you. <laughs> you are, you bet, really, you are. And uh, you'll meet it constantly and you'll call it me every time. And you gotta, let's lay a little suspicion in there. Not paranoia, but suspicion, healthy suspicion. And then see if it registers. See, I put these shoes on and they fit. Yeah. I heard you can't use the Buddha to seek the Buddha. I heard a guy talk once and he used an old Zen saying while he was giving a talk and he started laughing. He says, I'm like a man standing by the river selling water. And then he really said, I never heard him. I only seen him a few times, but I never heard him laugh like this. He says, it's funnier than that. I'm a man standing in the river selling water. I walked out, I never went again. Yeah? You have the ability to be convinced. There's an aspect in you that knows. Yeah? Let it. Allow it to. When, where, are you, are you going to have such faith in an outside authority when there's no faith in your own gut? No. You can't lay this on other people. You got to hear it. And if it hits you in the gut, fucking go for it. See what happens. Yeah, to me it was like an unspoken yes, been reverberating ever since, and uh, that's that. And in, and in this world, it appears to be the last answer to a very important topic for me. And a last answer is incredible because it negates all need for any other answer concerning the topic. I've never run into anything like that, ever. I haven't. Every, every answer I ever had led to a, you know, radical answer or extreme. Let's, this just ended it. It's so beautiful. Yeah, and then I could just fucking have a nice coffee and buy some pants and, 
you know, dream of uh, 50 licks, ice cream. Yeah. So, hey, that's it. Any questions? Yes. You said unspoken yes. Yeah. I guess to what? Just an, uh, an, like an, uh, an acknowledgement of what's so before knowing it. Yeah, I use the word, uns I use the unspoken yes because it's an image, provokes an image in me. The un yes is sort of like a, sort of a, an acknowledgement of knowing before knowing shit. Yeah, that's what it was like. And then it just reverberated ever since. And my mind met its master it can entertain that which is always happening is pretty much all engulfing to the aspect of what we're entertaining. Yeah. So I believe we're entertaining all this. We're dreaming. Uh, and that's the word you brought up. Hmm? All this, the last few sentences you said brought up all this sadness, but it's like joyful sadness. It's like it's like, wow, you can just, you can just. Do that again, honey. Just go wow like that. Come on. Yeah, there you go. And then you'll be going more like this. More. Just all more up. Exactly. We come we come to the riches with a very small bowl. Fuck it. It feels sad though, but it's kind of like finite. They're like Yes. Yeah, it is. Yeah. That's exactly what it's like. It's rich, yeah. Yeah. All those things like laughing and shit like that, they're all signs. They're good signs, really, in my view, yeah? And then see how your shoulders and chest open, and then it will open more, because this is almost a symbolicness of the contraction of our heads and our emotions, yes? People, and it's nice when you feel like you're bigger. That's a sense of what you are, not what you're not. What you're not wants to cave in what you are is more like, yeah, available. We used to have this thing in AA where I lived. You know AA, it's a program of recovery from extreme addiction. And then really you could drop the, the drinking and call it thinking. You know, thinking is the original, in a sense, addiction. But I got in there and would have a mentor that would work with you. And then they would say, hey, listen, I want you to write down everything you want and more for the first year of your sobriety, you know what I mean? Like dream big, write down. And then if you stayed sober, they'd bring out the paper and you'd read it and you shortchange yourself so fucking much. Life had given you so much more in that year. Yeah? You're like, oh yeah, if I, so much. This one guy, just to tell a beautiful story. I met him, he had a black eye in recovery and he asked me to be a sponsor. I said, well, I'll be your sponsor if you tell me how you got the black eye. He says, all right, I was robbing my roommates, so I had to look like it was a burglary, so I hit my fucking face with an iron. I said, all right, I'll sponsor you. So he had a white, he had a kid that he was estranged from and there was a restraining order by his wife at the time. And all he wished for was hopefully to see his daughter sometime. Yeah, so he starts doing the program and things start changing like they are apt to do when you get out of the way. Yeah, and he starts so suddenly, then he can get a, a, a two hour meeting with a police officer and uh, some and the father of the wife or something. Yeah, and she could see her daughter once a month, once a month. So he gets that, then it gets to be once a week. Then the sheriff doesn't have to be there. This and that. And all this stuff gets reestablished with him. And after a few years, he met another woman, had another baby, and got custody of the first one. So now he has a wife and two kids where he didn't think he was ever going to see his first kid ever again. This is the head, yes? If you live by that, you're going to be ducking your whole fucking life. And you don't have to look big, you are big, yeah? It doesn't have to be flamboyant. You just have an ease and comfort throughout what's going on, yeah? Because you know you've never left. You know it, not know it, it's even past that, yeah? On having never left, all the supposed power you had to exile yourself from things or 
fuck things up. Haven't left a mark on any any of it, really. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. Any more questions? No. Yes. So, what's it like being a lion? What's it like being a lion? Uh, well, you know what? Being a lion doesn't really uh, keep note of being a lion. You still eat? Of course I eat. You still live your life? You still have yeah, family? Yeah, for sure. I don't cut my hair anymore. I don't get it curled. <laughs> uh oh, it's just like a, I'm not this. This is an action figure. Yeah? It has its own little predilections and its little destiny. Yeah? And that's playing out. And then there's the lion roaring behind it. It's fine. So you're just not invested? Not much, no. I'm not invested in a lion either. If, you're, if you are something, you don't need a, you are something. <laughs> you don't have to, if, if you're okay, you don't have to look to see if you're okay. <laughs> Part of the okayness is that interest and attention is constantly surveilling your imagined or perceived states. You lose interest in all that. Yeah. <laughs> but you still feel pain. You still of course feel I do. Yeah. You still feel all of the things that lions would feel because lions are also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm using the lion thing okay. is a metaphor, yeah. yeah. But of course, yeah. There's not, this isn't like a gate, get out of jail free card. <laughs> you just lose interest in being the, the jailer and the jail and the jailee. It's all about interest, really, if you want to come to it. And you can't lose interest as what you're not. That would be interest in what you're not. So there's a, you have to see how the, the clear, clean way of losing interest is seeing you're not that which wants to lose interest, let's say. Yeah? So you lose interest in all, a lot of what you're not. And in that losing interest, the interest, to, you know, will inform, this is observational, this can observe, it's like two levels above a coconut, yes? The action figure has sentience, it's not fucking like an inert rock, yeah? So it's observational, so after time you can see things have happened, <laughs> and you're like, and, uh, and <laughs> things look different, yeah? And, you're, and it's obvious you had nothing to do with it because it's as surprising to this as it is to anything else, yeah? So, uh, you, but you can observe changes. You can express, this is an expression to me, and an, observ an observation point. It's not a cause. It's an expression and an observation point. It can see things, yeah. It can look at, wow. So, yeah. But I found it's all, I really, in hindsight, it was perverted interest, which was the biggest obscuring agent. The interest in trying to find what you are as what you're not is the biggest obscuring factor. So when you lose interest in that, things become very clear without you trying to make them become clear. Yeah? Yeah. That's hard. I wish I could bottle it. I'm just telling you, this is my observations of it. Yeah? It's not like the lion. Yeah, I feel everything more probably than ever. Yeah? But they don't get so like pain doesn't get extended in time and get into mental suffering because I'm I have pain all the time because I got run over and uh, I'm st I'm still at the body still at the effects of that one action that night in 1980 so it's pretty extended but the suffering is more of an add-on so if I'm sitting here thinking or feeling this pain, and then the head goes, this pain is bad, and it's gonna get worse, yeah? And I'm a devotee to the thoughts, it's gonna make it insufferable, what's happening, when I, it's okay, when it's just the pain, yeah? So the head is going to add on to things. Yes? To me, that's suffering. Suffering is when you induct it, when you inject time into pain, that's suffering, yeah? So the mental state wants to always in, inject time into pain. It wants to say, this means you're going to be fucked for the rest of your life. Now, if you're fucked for your rest of your life, if you believe that, you're out to do almost anything right now. 
you'd get relief, wouldn't you? If you felt, I'm going to be feeling this the rest of my life, and you don't like this feeling now, you're, you can do a lot of, you can be moved to do a lot of shit. Yes? A lot of shit. And if you think you're going to be a, you know, a, a defense against it, not if you're the thinker. If you believe you're the thinker of the thoughts, the thoughts will have you. They will. And also, because we're, we're taking ourselves to be this, the biggest thing we're up against is, is time. Time is the huge magic trick. Yes? Time is, is the wand of the magic trick. It's the, it's the essential, essential aspect of dreaming is time. Yeah? So if you're feeling bad now and it tells you you're going to be... I've seen people kill themselves coming from listening to their head. Yeah? They get, they get led to taking their own life based on the forecast their head keeps giving them, that they're not useful to their wife and kid, they're crippled now, they're a burden, ba 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 and it leads to a point where they take their own life. Yes? So are you mostly in a state of an observation of your being? No, I don't observation, I don't have very little observation of this. I'm like just a free range fucking thing. I have no idea. I know I'm not keen, I'm interested in this. There's interest in this, it comes with the package, but it's not an extreme interest in it. That's the whole beauty of it. I've lost interest in the, see, if, if your whole system, your whole, if the mental state takes this to be you, it's got a huge amount of interest in it, yeah? That's the burden. You don't want, you want it to be dispersed and relaxed. You don't want it focused and directed because what you're thinking, you're looking at, the bigger reflection is this way. Yeah? You really, it's just all about fucking you. That's what happens. There's a lot, there's a loss of interest in that whole thing that you didn't even know was going on. The, the support and reinforcement of this obsession, you have really no, if you're always in it, you can't know you're in it. You're thinking it's normal. You know it when you get relief from it. When you're relieved of it, then maybe you can report back why it, there wasn't relief. And I'm telling you, it's interest and attention. Your interest and attention is configured. It's all in a loop of everything pertaining back to you. That's the dilemma. If you try to look at a farther goal and a more noble goal, it actually produces a bigger reflection back here. If you see it, you'll feel the fucking futility of it. And there's, that's a beautiful point, yeah? Because what can a failed system show you? It can show you it's failed. Yeah? And let's get on with it. You have enough evidence to see it already. We're just rehashing over fucking shit. Let's move off the pot and go on, yeah? You don't need any more information. You got enough. The case is easy to be made. Just see it. You'll see it now. I'm telling you, you can see the thoughts. When the thoughts are noted, they, there's a sense that gets produced that you're the thinker. And then the thinker is pictured as a body. That's the activity of the bondage of self. It's an activity. It never happened. It seems to be happening. It seems like it what did happen, and it's going to happen. Therefore, it seems like it's happening now. It's all fucking remembered and made up and manufactured through time. It's, that's the magic trick. So the mental state goes, you know, there's this thing we call I am, you know, the indeniable fact that you're on. So I am. All right, so you would think that would be enough to keep us <laughs> somewhat clear. I am. So the mental state, hey, what the hell's gonna, what am I gonna do with that fucking unmovable thing? I am. All right, I was Paul. So let me go back. Let me see Paul when he was four. How are you gonna see Paul when he's four? I'm as a body, right? You look at pictures. Uh, there I am in India. What a spirit! No, you're, you are in Delhi as a body at the you know airport. So the, all the memory system sees you as a body. Yes, you're remembered as a body. You're thought about as a body. You are perceiving bodies. 
all the mental processes that there's an extreme reliance on, thinking it is us, see you, project you, perceive you as a thing. That's, a ver that's almost insurmountable. How is the thing gonna get out of being a thing? Just see you're not a fucking thing. The way you get out is realizing you are never in. You are never going to transcend this place as the body. You're not gonna be in heaven playing golf as a body. It's not happening, it isn't. This body is bye-bye. The little thought voice box that says it's you isn't gonna fly off when it's not dead. It's gonna end. It's, as soon as the heart stops beating, you're not gonna hear a fucking other interpretation. Oh, the heart stopped beating. You're never gonna hear it. It's gonna end, yeah? It's not gonna be there to report. It isn't. If you're waiting for it to tell you you're fucked, you'll be dead before. Because he'll die, and, you know, and then you, where am you'll be in the bardo, as they say in Tibetan Buddhism. You'll be fucking lost, because you've been waiting, you've been living on a news report that's on a delay. So, there was no delay when this dies. You're not going to get a message a half a second later, oh, uh, you died, Paul. <laughs> you really fucked up. You should have done something. No, there's not going to be it. It'll be like it never happened. Yeah? Seriously, be like it never happened. This isn't... If this is real, just look at your subjective experience. So here we are at, a, at a, an event here. Very unwell attended, you know, an event. And we're sitting here, and uh, everyone is going to make the event what it is for them. The event isn't going to make you, you're going to make it. Isn't that dreaming? I mean, really, as like Dreaming 101, wouldn't that be the first little tidbit you could throw out there? Hey, wait a minute, yeah, I'm giving everything the meaning it has. That sort of implies dreaming, doesn't it? I mean, yes? Yeah, so this is dreaming. This is dreaming. And we're the dreaming. We're not in a dream. That would be the dreamt. And that's why you don't want to waste time talking to the dreamt about the dreaming, because then the dreamt will think it's dreaming. No, talk to the dreaming about the dreamt, so that the dreaming sees it's not the dreamt. That's the way it goes. Yes? I've seen it tons of times. People hear, oh, I'm the dreaming, as a dreamt. I should have 50 Cadillacs, good joints, tons of women running around naked, raw desserts all day. You know, that's how the dreamt would think it's dreaming. I'm going to get everything I want. You see the dream, you see the dreamt from the dreaming. Stop trying to see the dreaming from the dreamt. It's not available. The dreamt doesn't see the dreaming, doesn't get it, never, never, never. It's not its fucking pay scale, it isn't. This is programmed, it's, it's got a limited version stock model, self-centeredness. It doesn't have many, many add-ons. <laughs> It always frames everything in relation to itself as a body, spirit. When you talk about, look at the spiritual path. What takes up? What goes on a path? A body. There's no fucking spiritual path. It's a, it's a, it's a path called spirit by a body. Really. Yeah. The whole, all the little spiritual language. A lot of it is based talking to a body. You're gonna get to the top of the mountain. Does spirit get to the top of the mountain? It's at the bottom, the middle, all around it. It's a body that would get to the top of the mountain. It's all about us. It's like, all right, here's God. What's going to get the most emphasis? The one who is the knower of God, knower of God, knower of God, knower of God, knower of God. Knower of God. The whole spotlight, none, none of it's been on God yet. It's knower of God, knower of God. Then suddenly, <laughs> you know what I mean? The movie ain't about where we're, it's us. There's an obsession, a deep fucking obsession. The, probably the strongest addictions of all addictions is the mental state's addiction to being a self, to being a long-lasting, separate doer, thinker, feeler, haver, loser. Yeah, that's the real. And it, we're so we're so deeply in it, we don't even see it. We think we have other addictions. Oh, I'm a drug addict. 
Why did you do drugs? Because you wanted to get out of self, basically. But you try to get out of self as self, so it fails. So all addictions fail because they haven't targeted, or the, all the addictions fail because they haven't targeted the original addiction. Yeah? Yeah, so. That's it, eh? And if you're interested in Zen Bitch Slap, or this talks, there's tons of YouTubes on uh, Paul Hedeman on, on YouTube videos. And we'll go over these same things. And I'll tell you, if you listen to it, it's sort of like, you know, ever see a lazy Susan, you know, on a dinner table? You move it around and there's little things. It's sort of like that. Your mental state is like a, it's tricky. It's like a, it's got a great defense. I'm, I'm a sheep, I'm a sheep, you know. But one may get through, yeah? And once it hits the mother egg, your mind, it, the mother egg may go, hey, it will conceive an idea. Hey, maybe I'm not that, which is being described. And then the possibility of being free from it becomes available, yes? And then you'll see, hey, wait a minute. If the freedom is based on from an, an imaginary thing, then I must always have freedom available, yes? Because if the inheritance of the freedom is based on an imaginary thing, there's no thing. So you're inherently free. Yeah? You just follow the breadcrumbs. And then maybe what is in, put it off in time and action, you'll know, you'll have a sense, I am what I've been looking for. Yeah? And maybe you'll chill out a lot of stuff that you thought was really important. It may. And if you have a spiritual budget, you'll probably save a lot of money. You will, because you won't do a lot of shit you used to do, because you just won't be interested anymore. Yeah. So if that's the case, I'd like you to tie at least twenty percent of your spiritual budget to me if I save it for you. If I save you five thousand, at least send me five hundred. <laughs> and you know what? It's going to be more the next year, because once you realize nothing's changed by going or not going, you won't be going. You maybe find other things to do. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> Some only put one toe in the water. Then you realize the fucking foot of God has him squished you. Like, you're okay. <laughs> Something's playing God up there, but it ain't what you would hope to be God. It's just a mental aberration going crazy. Yeah? It's playing God, for sure. But it isn't what we just call God. Yeah? We are. Yeah? So you can see you're not that which is playing God. And then the playing God will be put in a much smaller theater. It won't be like in a surround sound IMAX. You ever see those big screen TV screens? And then they have a little box of something else going on? So here is you in this huge screen now. What will happen is you'll be shrunk to this little box here. And then a lot's going on. <laughs> <laughs> there you are. You're still on this Paul thinking he didn't get what he wanted. Whatever. That's happening. But it's the most of the most of the screen will be panoramic. Fucking then you'll be available to what's going on. Yeah? Instead of this being here and then a little box of oh, there's the truth, oh there's no self and I should be at peace. Yeah, whatever. No. Yeah, it will be the opposite. That which is the background will be the foreground. The foreground will be the background. Instead of looking this way, thinking you're going forward, you'll realize you've been going backwards the whole fucking time. Switch around. Horses in front of the cart. You will feel it like you've never felt anything else. When something is on, you know. It's sort of like a... It's like a a compass that has forgotten something, but then once again it hits north and it knows, yes, yeah. You know, have faith in your own gut. Don't lend your faith to everyone else, yeah. yeah. All right, we have books and uh, t-shirts, and please, get, you know, donate heavily tonight. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. I gave it my all. I gave Portland my all. <laughs> <laughs>